if you had a child that was neurologically impaired, autism, whatever it is, and you're going to do a therapy, how would you know that's a accepted therapy in your head or fraud? What would be some of the guidelines you would do? First of all, be a guarantee to you cure. I'd probably walk out of the place and talk to him. Well, you're talking about if you're going to an, a, a provider that's going to do a, give you a therapy. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's a really good question, actually. That's the best question I've, I've heard today. It's a good one. Um, I think what you have to do is, is ask several things. I think you should ask if there have been any studies. Okay, And that doesn't mean someone wrote a book and said my child was improved, but have there been any real clinical trials? Evidence-based. Uh, that are evidence-based where someone takes a uh, sugar pill versus their pill and compares it and does it in a blinded fashion where there's no financial incentive. Uh, even drug companies do that. I mean, they're spo that, Otherwise, they can't get through the FDA, FDA. One should look if it's been approved by the FDA, but that's not also, that's the Federal Drug Administration, but that's not also uh, in children. A lot of things aren't approved, and we apply them to children because they are just too expensive to do, and we just have to go on and do that. So you can't just say if it's not approved by the FDA, it's not good for children because uh, we we'll never, may never get that information. Um, and I also think one has to look at financial incentives, and you know that's a big thing now. But one has to look at uh, is the doctor making money on this test? So, if for example they're giving you chelation, and they're charging you five thousand dollars to do it, because insurance doesn't cover things that are not, you know, standard, um, and uh, there's no study, clinical trials, I think one should be very wary. Now, my position is if my, one of my patients comes and says, gee, I went to this doctor, and they're, for $5,000, they're going to inject whatever they're going to inject, and I'll say to them, gee, there's no data for this. Uh, if it's potentially safe, if it's probably safe, I'll say, gee, I don't know, but it's probably safe. It's up to you if you want to spend the $5,000. Uh, if it's potentially not safe, like chelation, uh, I would, I, I would uh, say that, and I would say, gee, I wouldn't advise it. The term risk-benefit ratio, so you have to know the real risk. Say someone's even thought of chelation, they should go and check how many kids have died from chelation. Correct. And, and some of the places, there's a, a doctor in Atlanta was closed down, I think he's in jail now, because he put 10 kids at high risk, I think some kids died. And you got to understand that. And maybe there is some benefit in some crazy therapy, but you got to check it out carefully. It's That's not right. the money. It's the life of your child that risks. Well, I think you have to look at the risks. You have to look at the, the benefits, which may not be known. But if there are no risks and you want to try it and it's just money and you can afford it, not a bad, it's okay. Uh, if, it's, if it has risks and it's a lot of money uh, and there's no data that it works, I mean, I certainly wouldn't do it in my child. Uh, I think a lot of times parents are hoping, well, maybe my child will be the first one that it really works in. Uh, but that's, I think, a dangerous and slippery slope and, and wouldn't agree with that. Two that I saw recently, and I actually saw it. I have video. I didn't put it on any internet. I, went, I couldn't believe I saw. They kick a laser. They put it to a child's head, moving it around, and says, this chiropractor, I can cure a kid of autism. Is there any study that said that laser to a head? No, but that's kind of an interesting anecdote. There was a, uh, a long time ago, uh, there was a, a magazine article that someone sent me that said applying magnetic fields to patients had cured epilepsy. And the magazine article was in a, a European magazine, and it said, please send money to these researchers. Uh, these guys published uh, a, a paper in a sort of a second-tier journal after that article. And the paper was published, and there was a big outcry, how could this journal, uh, this, it was a neurology journal in, in Europe, how could this journal take this paper because it wasn't very well founded in any real data. And, uh, and uh, so there was a comment, well, at least these guys aren't asking for money, but the reality is they were in this lay magazine. It was kind of uh, unfortunate. And I, I don't remember their names. Actually, they were in Salonica, Greece, I think. And uh, the reality of it is, is there may be some effects of magnetic fields in terms of improving epilepsy. And people have actually studied that, and there are some effects. So it wasn't totally crazy. It was okay. I think the problem there came, they asked for money. Uh, in a magazine, in the lay article, so that made them already very suspect. And I think you have to. It doesn't mean that with further studies, something like laser may work, uh, but the point is it may be dangerous, it may not be, I don't know, and there's really no data right now that it does anything in autism. I saw a couple of doctors, MDs in Jersey, for $8,000 a year for five years, claim, and I don't think there's any validity to this, with eye-hand coordinated exercises, 
to cure ADD in autism. Is there any studies or anything you know about that that works? Well, we, we, there's no data that anything cures ADD. Well, it makes and the kid better. It improves the kids uh, focusing. Is there well, any? there's no data that anything improves kids with ADD long term. I mean, medicine works for short periods of time, but it doesn't improve them long term necessarily. I mean, we don't have data that it does. We really don't. And there's no data that anything improves autism long term at all, other than behavioral interventions and good parents and, uh, you know, therapies. And even those are, there's no real data that it really makes a huge difference. In other words, there are some children that do very well with autism, for example, and there are kids with ADHD that mature and they outgrow it. But there's no evidence that doing something increases that chance. Well, 